Hello. Okay. Hi. Hello, hello. Thanks for joining. And we are on lesson 39, calling in the one, seven weeks to attract the love of our life, and we only have 10 days left. Hello, Taiwan. And then I have an awesome treat. I'm going to jump off after we do this lesson and jump back on with my girlfriend that just had an insane date for all the men that are watching. So you know exactly what not to do. And for the women, you will be completely entertained. <laughs> completely entertained. Because, <laughs> I mean, I probably look like I have tears right now because I was laughing so hard. Um, good times in the dating world. So... Lesson 39, she titles it, Being at Cause. However, it's really about being responsible and ownership. Hi, Katrina. How are you? <laughs> I know who you are. I don't think I've met you, but I know who you are. So the first quote here is that many of us treat life as though it were a novel. We pass from page to page passively, assuming the author will tell us the last what the last page is all about. So, right? Does anyone else do that? Instead of, you know, flowing through life, we're just waiting for someone else to tell us the answer. Someone agrees. Someone agrees. We got some hearts going. Awesome. So, first off, she talks about this woman who, one of her clients, Catherine Woodward Thomas, the author of this book, and she had this client, and she was 30 pounds overweight. So, she complained about her weight all the time and blamed her chronic boredom, loneliness, everything on her weight and her dress size. So, bottom line is she kept trying to lose it, and it just wasn't working. And she finally confessed to Catherine that she was afraid that if she lost the weight, that men would find her attractive. However, she wouldn't be able to keep the weight off. <laughs> so what Catherine suggests is, why don't you lose the weight and don't bathe? <laughs> so, hi, thanks for joining, guys. So the funny thing is that most of us go through life as though we're a bunch of pinballs and we're bouncing off of everything. Versus being in a state of creation and ownership. And that's what this is all about. And it's something I coach into all the time. I'm Bethany London. I coach how to create dreams and turn them into reality. I already said hi to you, Katrina. So, um, looking at my friend who's going to jump on here after me. Where do I... Oh, this is me. You can go to BethanyLondon.com. You'll find my artwork. Um, okay, so if we look at what we do instead of what we say, we will see that ultimately most of us are interested in protecting ourselves, thank you, from the risks of love than the actual experience of being in love. Does that make sense to you guys? <laughs> I know I got interrupted reading it. I'm going to read it one more time. If we look at what we do instead of what we say, we will see that ultimately most of us are more interested in protecting ourselves from the risks of love than actually being in the experience of it. We are reading Seven Weeks to Calling in the One with Katherine Woodward Thomas, and we are in Lesson 39. We've made it 39 days, which is amazing. So it's good stuff. We go a little deep, and today's all about responsibility and She's saying that we rarely own outright how often we sabotage love by admitting. And I can take full responsibility for past relationships. I was in relationships where I thought it was too good to be true. And I constantly thought that to the point that I actually said it to the person. Can you imagine being in a relationship with someone that's telling you it's too good to be true? Like eventually it's just going to break. And it did. It did. So we got to be in ownership, in ownership. We may yearn for deep and meaningful connection. However, we react at any gesture of advancement because it, we turn it into this like full on attack within. So ridiculous, so ridiculous. So she has this other couple. So we have Nicole and Nancy, a lesbian couple. And they came to see her. 
and they've only been together a few months, but they're very reactive and very volatile with each other. And they have this style of communication where they're constantly blaming each other. I didn't write this book, no. This is by Catherine Woodward Thomas. So these two women are constantly blaming each other for their flaws, for their failures, they're being victims. They aren't listening to each other in depth, um, which is another lesson we've talked about in the past. So it's always like, how can I make this person wrong? And that's not being loving. That's not being unconditional. That's being completely conditional. And I got to be honest, I was in this place before. I went to um, counseling way back when with my ex-husband. And oh my gosh, we would tally up like the things that were happening wrong in the relationship over a week or two weeks period of time, however often we went. And then we'd go and meet with our counselor guy who I actually really liked, but we it's like we would tally up all the things like he got five strikes, I only got three, and it was like ridiculous. It became like a game of keeping track of where we went wrong based on our counseling coaching techniques. Hi, thanks for joining. So when people are in this state of blame and victim and you did something wrong and I'm doing it the right way, it's not going to be a good relationship, obviously. So it's about being in ownership of everything, everything down to if the guy cheats on you or vice versa. Being in ownership of where, where did I source this? And as you guys know, if we're looking at some of the previous chapters, it could be that you purely sourced it because you wanted to validate a previous story that you have or conversation, a limiting belief. Um, so there's this interesting article. Uh, Dr. David Burns, an associate professor at Stanford, did an intensive study on 1,500 people. You guys, this is fascinating. So he and his staff differentiated or differentiating between what was happening in a thriving relationship versus a not thriving relationship. So what he found was one big thing. If your girl is a gold digger, well, then you are choosing to find a gold digger. You're choosing to be in a state of maybe being the hero and rescuing someone or wanting to provide for them, which you know, it's fine if you want to provide for them and they live off of you, but maybe it's that they add value in another way. And so don't look at it as a financial thing. Um, okay, so this, this thing that David Burns found, there was one thing that had the most impact on a long-term relationships. And that is blaming, blaming your partner for problems in the relationship. In other words, the one disparity between happy, flourishing partnerships and unhappy, failing ones were not how, were basically based on how intensely they played the blame and shame game. You aren't, when you're in a thriving relationship, which is what we're all about creating, is when we're in ownership and being coming from a solid place, being in ownership of something went wrong. If I know coaches and trainers that I that I've been mentored by, if they jump on a plane and it arrives late, a plane, they will take full responsibility for making it late to a meeting or a workshop or a training because the plane was late. Is it their fault? Not in my mind. Not in my mind. But when they're going to a meeting that's important and they're late, they take full responsibility versus being a victim because that's putting them in a powerful place. Okay, so you guys got that message. That's good, right? Solid. Let's not play the blame game. So Nicole and Nancy were all about this and they were used to being shamed by their parents. So when they created a relationship with each other, they were only validating these beliefs that they had about relationships and how it's almost normal to be blamed. Yeah, this goes way outside of relationships. This is just 
we're just using it in this context because it's the chapter, but I coach into this in all areas, all areas. If you aren't at the income level that you want to be, it's your fault. <laughs> if you don't have a relationship, it's your fault. It, there's so many, it's all about being responsible and maybe not even worrying about that you are supposed to be at some certain level or be married with kids and have the white picket fence. It's about owning and embracing the journey and knowing you're in the perfect place as well. Like that's a huge aspect of it and trusting that you will get the family with the white picket fence at some point and just knowing and just relaxing into that, surrendering into that. So whenever we blame others for the current circumstance of our lives, we abdicate responsibility for our choices and reinforce our own impotence. We construct an either or, right or wrong, and this creates shame. It, it's, not, it's not healthy. So in doing this, we end up alienating others by making them wrong, and pretty soon we're living in a loveless world. But hey, at least we came up on came out on top, you know. I was right. I was right. <laughs> so not good. So not good. So true love feels perfectly safe to explore. And it's okay to admit our faults or our weaknesses and take responsibilities of where we went wrong. <laughs> Thanks. So that's what true love is about. And I want to I want to read these two quotes that she has. Happiness and true freedom come only when we assume full responsibility for who and what we are. So freedom and happiness come from responsibility. I could not agree more. Uh, another thing here, another quote: Thoughts crystallize into habit, and habit solidifies into circumstance. So if we have a belief that we're overweight and we're not going to meet the man of our dreams or the woman of our dreams because we're overweight, it's not going to happen. And if we think that we're going to lose the weight and it's possible and we've done it before, but we're going to gain it right back, that's going to happen because we're setting it into stone when we have those thoughts. So it's all about shifting, taking responsibility and going into action. There is a great sense of relief in being able to freely admit our faults without the fear of being judged. Completely agree. Could not agree with that more. Huh. Yeah. I mean, it's scary. It's scary, but it's so powerful to just be with somebody and to be vulnerable and to know that they love you with your flaws that aren't your flaws anyway. They're just you. It's just you. Uh, here's another here's another study or something about uh, responsibility, which I love. So, a spiritual mentor admonished her, Catherine Woodward Thomas, in being 100% responsibility for the, responsible for the quality of relationships at all times and work and friend relationships and everything. This is always everything, but in a partnership. We like to think of a solid partnership as being 50-50. However, the best relationships are actually 100-100. And a good friend of mine that just got married, I loved what they were saying at their wedding. It was about you have the woman, you have the man, and you have the relationships. So that's three. That's three entities that are fully get to be independent yet connected to each other. So... If you're always saying I'm only 50% responsible, then that means you're all the other 50%, you're always at an effect. You're being in a victim area with the other person. So what she suggests is that you seriously ask yourself how it is that you gave somebody else permission to disrespect and abuse you because it's your issue. If there's issues, you're allowing it to happen. You may make somebody wrong and go to all sorts of lengths to blame them and shame them and ultimately get rid of them entirely, but until you take full responsibility for how you've been in an in, for how you've been an invitation for abuse, and it could be verbal, you'll most likely continue to attract another person that's also abusive because we're going to recreate that same story until we take notice 
and take a step outside of our box and move forward. So, whenever you're pointing a finger at somebody, notice that there's always three pointing back. You guys have heard that one, right? Okay. Victim consciousness goes something like this. It's not my job. It's not my fault. It just happened. I couldn't help it. I don't know. So that's justifying poor behavior and blaming others for your choices. So it's about stopping and asking, what is it that I am unwilling to be responsible for in this situation? And when we're standing in a place of 100%, 100% for whatever is happening at any given moment, even when life's not fair, is where you are going to be powerful and persuasive and creative and glowing and radiant beyond measure. It is a commanding way to live and one that the universe richly rewards. Love it. Love it. How do you know when you're with the right person? Don't think about it. Listen to your body and not a certain part of your body, but like your intuition your heart, you feel that connection, that depth, and more. Your gut. Yes, Tessie Tracy. <laughs> your gut, for sure. So the homework today is to journal. It's journaling. Tessie, you need to jump on for the next one because it's going to be hilarious. Okay, who am I making wrong and for what? We're journaling about these questions because it may allow us to uncover other concerns and issues that are like in the depths that we aren't fully aware of. The next one, what can I be responsible for in this situation? What could I accept about this situation that the world would help me to give up blaming and shaming? What can I appreciate about this situation? What are the strengths that I bring to my relationships? What are the weaknesses that I bring to relationships? Oh my gosh, I loved it. Someone wrote on here one day, a few days ago, what'd they write? What is your warning label? <laughs> I thought that was the cutest thing ever. I'm like, I'm so using that. Um, okay, what if anything that I have been unwilling, what if anything have I been unwilling to admit to others? Going deep, going deep. So those are the questions to journal about today and see what we can uncover. And then, as always, there's a bonus. So the bonus today is to take charge of being wrong by admitting your capability and where you're looking into making things right or wrong throughout the day. You may need to start apologizing in the moment. Like, let's clear it. Let's clear that space and get rid of it so that we can move past. It's baby steps. You may need to rectify a situation or ask someone what you can do to make something right. Regardless, it's about being 100% responsible from here on out. Okay? So that's what it's about today. Trust me, your life will it will move so fluidly once you start being in 100% responsibility and creation. Because really that's what you're doing is when we're in 100% responsibility, we're putting ourselves into creation. Mm, yes, it is so important to be supportive of our relationships and our partners. Huge. Um, letting go of our attachment to being right and suddenly opening our mind will benefit from the unique viewpoints of others without being crippled by our own judgment. Ralph Marston. Marston. So that is the lesson of today. Tomorrow, lesson 40, living the questions. Hmm, I don't know what that's going to be about, but we'll find out here in a bit. Uh, so that's tomorrow. You guys, feel free to share this with your people. Um, I think you can swipe to the right and share with your following if you feel that some, some people in your community would love to learn about how responsibility will impact them. <laughs> Maybe it could be a subliminal message. I don't know. 
But um, I'm going to jump off, and I'm going to jump back on in a few minutes with my girlfriend who just had the most hilarious date because it is worth sharing. And for all the men that are always on here, don't do this. <laughs> okay. So we have nine more lessons to go, people. That's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Oh, thank you for all the hearts. I love them. Love the love. Love the love. Don't do what? Oh, I'm going to jump off. I'm going to jump on. I'm going to bring my girlfriend over. I'm going to jump on with her, and she's going to share a dating story because it's so funny. Why well, have to get off? Because it needs to be a separate post okay. from, yeah, calling the one. Look, she's right here. She's ready to go. Okay, I'm jumping okay. off. I'm going to jump right back on. Okay, love you. Spread the love.